So guys, I got called out here to run, I mean to work on this Skyjack uh, SJ6832RT and I'd come out here and the alternator on this was smoking. Like when you connect the battery, it killed the battery. And the alternator was heating up to like 150 degrees in like two minutes of it sitting here. And when I put my amp clamp around it, it was pulling uh, like 74 amps. So I put a new alternator on it. You can see the alternator back there. This whole thing slides out. But now we've been having an issue with the thing running. Like this light kept coming off here. Like, And I'm not used to their diagrams because I think they use like a... It's like the Euro DIN diagram, and the light kept coming off here. And I talked to them, and they said that there was, uh, there was the wiring diagram. Where they said that there was a five wire, because they, they number everything in here, in numbers. Like everything's in numbers on here. And they said that, I talked to them, and they said that the, uh, where was it? The five wire feeds the 10 wire at the e-stop the engine running and then the seven wire powers the eight wire for the e-stop down here and then I came over here and I noticed that when we, when we move this like uh, let's see let's see if we can get this to act up let's see where is this at if I move the harness let's see shut off like when that lights on it'll stay running Let's see is it not gonna act up now there it went see the light went out The lights going in now and, and when I touch like somewhere right around here uh, the light turns on and I also had noticed that this wire is damaged but it's still making contact so uh, we're gonna have to fix this wire and then we'll have to see what's not making contact down here see if there's like another wire or something and then I had also saw that uh, there was this wire, but they said the green wire with the black stripe and the dash wires is not used. So I don't know if somebody tried to use it because I guess there's a couple wires in here that aren't used like this one. So we're going to have to see what's causing this to have like a bad connection. So I'm going to keep working on this. I'm going to fix that wire. It's not this one because I can bend it all the way like that and it's not going out. But we're just going to have to carefully Let's see. Just move these carefully and see which one act up. So this wire right here, okay, so physically wiggling the switch like this, like just up and down right here, look at that. So I think this has a bad contact in it, just moving that switch. Actually, I think it might just be right here where these wires go in. So, right here. Right here, just going like that. So we're gonna have to take this apart and see what's called, look at that. Crazy, but see this one stays lit. This is where it's nice, you know, talk to somebody that knows how these work. Cause like I said, I don't usually work on these. Like all the wires are numbered eight and B's and whatever else they put on here, 32. Like, see, there's numbers everywhere. So that's how you know where the wires go, but it's just really, really confusing to me, at least, because I don't work on this stuff. So we're gonna go get some tools. We're gonna fix this. I guess we'll cut this off since this ain't used. 
try to clean this up and get it back together for him so it works. So guys, I got the wire heat shrink and soldered. And I got this separated. So if we come in here and we wiggle the whole connector inside here, like I can wiggle this all these wires, nothing even twitches. But if I start wiggling this right here, you can see we can get it to go in and out just on this blue side right here. So I'm going to see if we can get these wires out of here. We'll see if they're corroded or not. It looks like they might be, but it's hard to tell. So I'm going to try to get them out, and we'll see. I'm assuming you just replace like parts of these switches. Maybe we can clean it. I don't know. We'll see what happens. I just don't know how to get these out of here. It looks like they might just push in. So guys, I cleaned the contacts. It still acts up when you touch it, but it's working. So. So guys, look at this. I connected it to the battery. Look at that. Great. So guys, I got my map on set up here. Amp clamp, watch this. 50 amps that pulls. Crazy. It pulls 70 when you have it connected right to the battery with a heavier cable. But I don't have heavy enough cables because it got pretty warm just from that. But let's see what we're charging at right now. Okay guys, so we're down to 6 amps. I got this all strapped up. He had zip ties on here before. I put new ones on. Because the old ones were broke. So that ain't moving anywhere. I screwed the box back together, but it still has that bad terminal. But now we got to figure out why it's stuck on rabbit mode and not... or turtle mode and not rabbit mode. So like if we push this over... See, It'll go up, but we need to figure out why that's not being controlled or if it is controlled. So I'm going to get some scope leads and we'll look at it. i got to find it on the diagram. I think I got some information on this before. Uh, yeah. It says, he told me to check circuit breaker 34 ACR and 33 CR because that feeds 34 C throttle solenoid. So we'll come over here, uh, 34 ACR and 34 CR right there. So it looks like there's some corrosion on here, but I don't know if that'll affect it. So I'm going to get my test light and we'll, I'll check these quick. So I think he said it feeds power over. So guys, I connected the 20, the control side of uh, relay 34 ACR right there. Right now the test light's lit. If I turn it to turtle mode, no light. Turn it back, we got a light. So our relay's being controlled. Let's look at this. So we got power on that side. We have power on that side. So that one should be good. Now we gotta go over to 33 CR, I believe it was. 33. Uh, yeah, 33 CR. So we'll check 33 CR. So guys, let me show you this. So I have my test light connected to where the solenoid goes. So watch this. If I if I touch this relay and command the relay on, see the light lights and the solenoid doesn't move. I wonder if the solenoid's shorted. I'm gonna disconnect it and just use my test light. I'm gonna disconnect it and just use my test light and we'll see if this lights up because it is labeled positive and negative. And I just wonder if like, I wonder if that solenoid's shorted because it should be turning on. And I also need to find out what's actually turning this relay on because there's a number Two that goes here, which is ground. I mean, O2, I think it's ground. And then there's a 33. I don't know where 33 comes from. 
Yeah, it looks like 33. So we need to find out what controls 33. Because the guy told me I talked to 33CR feeds 44C, which 44C is this. But we need to figure out what's controlling 33. So guys, my testing was wrong. Well, I was right, but kind of wrong. So I put my headlight bulb on here where the solenoid's supposed to be, because this is power on demand. Now, if I actuate one of these ramps, look at that, my headlight bulb comes on. So, that confirms the circuit. So guys, I connected this back up. Watch this. If I try to actuate this, look at our current. There we go. Look at that. 18 amps. So this solenoid right here is shorted. Because if I hook my light back up, let's see, watch this. So my lights hooked back up. Look at that. So there you go, shorted solenoid. I hope you guys like this. See you later. So guys, here's some bonus footage. The plastic thing that goes on the bottom that hits this limit. Switch rod that comes up. Broke, like you can see it over there. So we're gonna try to fix this with some all thread and make a new one, because it's just the rod that goes down with a nut on the end, and I gotta get this unscrewed up here. So, because here's the limit switch. It rolls up and it pushes this in. See, it pushes the, it pushes the switch in. So we gotta get this cone off then there's a nut that holds it tight, and then there's a nut welded there. So guys, here's the all thread, and the cone fits on. It's the same thread. So I think he, I think if he gets like two nuts, put the nuts down here, I think we'll be good. Because the bottom is where it broke right here. Where it was threaded on the bottom with a nut. So I think what he has to do is get two more nuts so we can tighten them at the same spot on here. And then cut it to length. I think we'll be good. So hopefully you guys like it. Just a little bonus feature. See you later.